Hey guys, it's Missy Wolf and I'm here with Michael Bland and Michael, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. It's been such a long time and I've been we've been trying to get an interview with you for a while now. Um, I saw you in LA at the Whiskey playing with Soul Asylum and when we had gotten there for that that event, you were the one who greeted us back, you know, back before we went to the green room and we chatted with you so much that night and then when I realized you were the drummer you kicked so much ass on that stage my jaw <laughs> dropped I I can't even tell you holy crap you're an amazing drummer how long have you Thank been doing you. this well uh, I'll be 48 in March so I started when I was about nine or ten I'm not that good at math <laughs> <laughs> it's all right because I'm 38, so you know. Oh my God, I just said my age. Damn it, you guys! You can edit that right. Forget oh. you heard that number. I can't edit that out now. It's too oh, late. No. I I keep it real. Um. Anyways, so no, you're 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 phenomenal, and and I love. I just love your enthusiasm, and and I love how energetic you are behind that set. It's it's incredible, and. That night was unreal anyway. The fans were, were going crazy, but I think there's a lot more to you than most people would realize. You have a, a very extensive resume. Um, so I don't want to just give everything away, but can you tell everybody, you know, some of the people who you've played for and, you know, tell us about some of those experiences? Sure. I mean, I got my first big break when I was 19. I, I, uh, got a job working for Prince. I toured and recorded with them, and I'm in a bunch of those videos in the 90s. Right. From about 1989 through 96, I was with Prince. And um, then I um, uh, began a short period of working with Paul Westerberg, actually. He was coming out with a solo record that he had started recording at Paisley Park, and that's how we met. Oh, wow. And uh, right around the time that I left Prince, he called and he was getting ready to go on the road. So we went out. So I was on a couple tracks on his record called Eventually. That was released in 96. Yeah. We went out and that, that was a great time. Um, after that, I uh, started doing a lot of work overseas. A lot of artists you may or may not have heard about. Uh, a woman named Franz Gall, who was um, kind of an icon, a pop icon. In, in France, she had been a star since she was like probably like 11 or 12. Oh, wow. You know, and um, from there, I was, I spent a lot of time in Italy. I did a lot of things. I, I worked for Shaka Khan for about a year in between there. Oh, God. Uh, you know, I, yeah, I'm not, I was, uh, I, you know, I, I got into a lot of different things, you know, right. before I had found. Soul Asylum looking for a drummer and they called me to do a recording session and we were rehearsing the material and Dave just stopped the band and he was like, hey, look, man, why don't you just join the band, man? And, I uh, love so Dave. All my traveling pretty much, you know, it, well, my erratic traveling ceased right. and I focused specifically right. on Soul Asylum. And I've been with Soul Asylum now for 11 years, wow. since like 04. Okay. Uh, my math is not working. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay because we're not in school right now. It's all good. All right. Um, <laughs> but no, so you've also played with somebody that I know my daughter's going to kill me because I didn't, oh, I didn't tell her this, but you played for the Nick Jonas administration, didn't you? I sure did. What was that like? I mean, you go from Prince and all of these amazing, you know, artists to this young up and coming, got teeny boppers everywhere. Artists. Yeah, like, it was like the inverse of working for Prince, kind of, because uh, I joined Prince so young. A lot of his fans were quite a bit older than me. <laughs> well, not quite a bit, maybe within 10 years or so. Right, right. But um, then working with Nick Jonas, it's like they're all <laughs> 30 <laughs> years younger. <laughs> That's crazy. Like, this is insanity. Uh, and they would yell and scream, and we would just kind of keep our heads down and walk to the bus as quickly as possible. and. Just try not to get caught up in all that craziness. They weren't there really to see us anyway. But, I you know, did. anybody near Nick, it's, oh, you talked to him today. Uh, you know. that, that's why I said my daughter's going to kill me when I tell her after, you know, that we've done our interview. I didn't want to tell her up front because I know she would have given me a whole slew of questions to ask you about him. Um, and, and mad props to Nick, by the way, if you're watching, which, you know, uh -huh. he's a really talented 
talented young artist. He, he, I mean, I've watched him since he was young and what has that been like for you? You, you work with so many different experience levels and so many different types of artists. What, what was that like going from Prince to, to Nick, not just the fans, but the individuals? I, well, I mean, he made it easy. I mean, he hired two other guys that were in the new power generation, which were Sonny Thompson and Tommy oh. Barbaro, the keyboard player and the bass player. And the two of us, well, the three of us had worked uh, in various scenarios with Nick's record producer, John Fields, who also produced the, the new Switchfoot record that just came out oh. and, uh, and uh, has done a lot of work and uh, worked for a lot of artists produced a lot of records, mm -hmm. produced all of the Jonas Brothers records. And um, so he was playing bass, Sonny moved the guitar, and mm -hmm. Tommy was playing keys, and we were all from Minneapolis, and it was just one big happy. It was more like he, you know, wanted to kind of surround himself in that right. sort of, you know, vibration. Which is great. I mean, you think about it, too, it makes sense, because, you know, he was with his brothers, in a band so for for him to still get that feel between you guys it's kind of like a reuniting you know a reuniting right i mean yeah it was a, a perfect excuse for us to all go on tour together because how awesome know, he, yeah i mean so it was a win-win and he needed also i think people who spoke the same language to kind of challenge and push him forward into different territory because right. you know most of what an artist a real artist is going to crave growth so, exactly exactly that, and that's what we tried to help him do and well I, I think for whatever hand you had in that you've done a great job because you know he is one of the few that i have really 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 enjoyed watching over the years just grow and develop his you know and he he knew early on who he was what yeah. he wanted to do and there was no stopping him which which i think is phenomenal and so I, i'm so glad you got to have that experience and watching that kind of take off too because that was his transition period right i mean that's what i i feel like so I think that's the, yeah. That was his first real attempt at sort of breaking away and doing something uh, without the concern of whatever Hollywood records might have wanted to say about it, or you know Disney. Like mm -hmm. he just kind of went rogue for a hot minute, and you know, uh, absolutely, he had a great time. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I'm so glad you got to be a part of that, and I'm so glad that I get to talk to you about it. But 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 back to you and and what you're doing. I mean, you've. You've been all over the world. I mean, like like you said, you know, Italy and in France and stuff. What has been your favorite place? Where has where is your favorite place to to play or favorite country to visit? Um, I I keep telling my my wife that uh, when I retire, I don't know when that's going to be though. <laughs> that we're moving to Italy. I got to figure out how to get a dual citizenship. Right? That is the greatest place on earth to me. I want to go so so <laughs> bad. Um, yeah, you do. I, I have family from Sicily, you know, way, way back. So oh. for me, and then I love, I, I'm just a, a straight up Italian girl here in Tennessee now. It, it's really kind of funny, but there are certain food items that I just have to have, like the Nutella and cream cheese on, on oh, toasted yeah. ciabatta bread. Like that is, that's huge. And people out here don't get it. And I'm like, just, you don't understand. And oh. and the gelatos and all of that. I'm the, <laughs> the Italian junk food junkie. I, it's my favorite. I got you. There's no other place I've ever been to that's quite like it. I mean, no matter what the region, no matter what the restaurant, you're completely just knocked over the head with excellence. It's, it's you know, <laughs> you can eat anywhere and it's the best food you ever ate. See? It oh, doesn't matter where you go. The people are, in, in terms of just like being open and friendly and they, you know, they, Sometimes they speak a little English, sometimes they don't, but right. always polite and, you know, very just kind of, they're a warm people mm -hmm. and uh, you have the mountains, you have the ocean, you, it's, Italy see, has go. everything. I gotta you see, go. It's just, yeah, you it. see it's families amazing. going out to dinner together still, you know, like you'll see the, you know, the grandparents surrounded by the children, you know, wow. on Sunday, coming out of the restaurant, so going wherever, you know, coming <laughs> from church, going to, it, there's a very familial aspect that mm -hmm. seems to be um you know i mean it's just you know, the united states is what it is but you know right. that type of family oriented society you know uh, has seemed to sort of just kind of uh be left behind you right. know here 
You don't, you just don't see it the same way. You, you, know? you really don't. I mean, I, I feel like I'm closer to it being in Tennessee than I was back in, you know, Southern California. I mean, sure. it's so fast paced LA, you know, I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's crazy busy and, and it's just, I feel like you could just get lost there. You know what I yeah. mean? But, mm -hmm. but then out here in Tennessee, things are a lot different for me and it's a lot slower. And I feel like I'm able to connect with my kids better here. And we're able to be like uh -huh. more of a family here. And, and, and have that experience that we couldn't have out there, which I think is phenomenal. And I don't feel so connected to technology out here. I, I know that's so weird, but out there it was it just, it's all everybody does. When you go and you look around, everybody's on it everywhere. There, you know, people don't go yes. out to dinner with each other anymore. So I'm glad you talked about that in Italy because my doctor was just actually out there and mm -hmm. every picture that he posted, I mean, the whole, every, all, the whole family is together and they're all enjoying each other's company and you don't see one cell phone out. And it was just, right. it was fabulous. I'm like, I long for that. I got to go. So when you retire there, I'm going to have to just come visit you and we're going to have to like <laughs> do some sort of, you know, on camera interview in your little, um, Villa, or you know, I, 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 trust me, I, I take any excuse to get back over there. <laughs> right. so I completely understand. Uh, absolutely. So, so what are you working on now? I mean, are, are you are you guys still on on tour doing shows right now? Are you kind of taking a break? Um, we're on kind of a break right now, and we're uh, just kind of doing things to stay busy until the summer. I'm not sure who we're going out on the road with, but we uh, just uh, signed with a new manager. His name is Joel Mark. He's at uh, at Dexstar out in LA okay. and uh, he has some different connections uh, nice. to people that we didn't, we, we weren't previously able to get in touch with. Right. Uh, I think some of the other managers at, at that uh, firm have like the Smashing Pumpkins and um, oh, okay. uh, Blink182 Blink I think is one of their clients. Uh -huh. Also Liz Fair, who we, we've been trying to tour with Liz Fair for like uh -huh. the last four or five years just because okay. we love her. <laughs> yeah, right, and, right. Um, I think that Joel also manages Liz, so we're hoping to uh, get in company with uh, the bands that are a little more similar from uh, from Soul Asylum's, you know. Right. Uh, uh, I don't want to say heyday, but I mean, you know, right. the 90s. It's weird. The 90s have made a resurgence, but, you know. They have. You have to have the right connection still. It's still business, you know. Right, so, right. You know, we enjoyed... We actually the show you the show you saw mm -hmm. was a one off on a tour that we had with the um, the English Beat, which was a weird pairing, but it kind of worked. Except right. for in some markets where it was like there'd be a local opener that right. was like a ska band, you right. know, and then we'd come on, and then they'd come on and be like, "Well, what are we doing here? It's it's turned <laughs> into a reggae night." So you know, awesome. it's I'd say <laughs> about sixty percent of those dates. Were, were were good dates, you know. Right. The other ones were a little here and there. You know? Yeah, and, and and I can I can definitely see that too. Um, yeah. And I, I mean, I think the experiences that you've had too, when you've had experiences with Prince and huge, huge stadiums and stuff like that, and then same same with Nick Jonas, and then you have those intimate venues. Sure. Which which one of those types of performances? would you say are your your favorite because i really 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 like the intimate venues i feel like the artist can connect to each person that's there a, just a little bit easier and it makes it a little bit more fun to me absolutely the closer the the audience can get to you the more you can interact and feel you know right. feel things going back and forth because um i'll tell you most of the shows that i remember playing with prince if they weren't at a club somewhere mm -hmm. if it was a stadium show it's yeah. just up, uh, us yeah. sort of isolated up on, you know, the stage right. and there's a big barrier in front. And, Absolutely. You know, and it's, I mean, that sort of scenario actually could be a lot more troubling than mm -hmm. anything, only because, um, you know, uh, people get rowdy and excited and, you know, in a situation like that, I, you know how many people I've seen get pulled over, you know, uh -huh. the, um, the barrier. Yeah. And, you know, they have like an amp, you know, they have uh, EMTs there and they, you know, people get hurt at shows like that. People stamp, Prince has stopped, he stopped many shows, uh, you know, and told everybody to take two steps backwards, you know, because oh, wow. we're seeing, you know, people getting suffocated or pushed up against the thing. It's, it's, that can really mess with your brain while you're trying to perform. And right? it, it, it 
Hey. Well, yeah, that's that's what I was going to ask. I mean, I've heard other artists say that when they're up on that stage, they can see so many things that are going on. They can yeah. see that drunk person fall down. They can see that fight break out. They can see that guy propose to that girl. You know what I mean? Yeah. They see so much stuff. Wow, that's, yeah, I, I, I didn't really think about it that way, though, that it could interfere with your playing when you're seeing well, stuff like that happening. It's, just, you, it's hard mindset. to ignore if you see a, a young girl who's collapsed and they're yeah. pulling her over the, you know, over the thing and putting her on like a, an, you know. <laughs> That's insane. They take them and they revive them and they put them somewhere. But it's, you know, it's, right. it's, that's the tragic side. The other side of it is just you, there's nothing like, you know, performing in front of 50,000 people who are completely crazy to see you. That Absolutely. sort of experience, I can't even really <laughs> put it into words. Like when you're, you know, when all that's going on, that's mm -hmm. a lot of, energy in one space that's focused on what's happening and it's just mm -hmm. there's nothing like it and you get a different kind of just whatever it is <laughs> just goes through your body and then you get on stage and you try to harness and focus it but it's really a very wild sort of I, thing. I can't even imagine I mean I've stood on the stage while performers were playing before and I've just been blown away by what you can see and how it feels and, and and i can't imagine though actually performing um in in front of all those people because I, I mean you get a packed stadium and it's it just feels so intense even when you're on the floor rocking out and you look behind you and you see that sea of people it's intense yeah, so it really is so out, out of all of your memories with with prince what would you say is your fondest oh wow i mean really uh, he and i had a lot of moments where we were recording it would just just be me and him, mm -hmm. and uh, and we just talk. We we bonded a lot over music because I have a very I have very eclectic taste, and so did he. I mean, Absolutely. I would go into Studio A sometimes and just look in the CD player to see what he had been listening to. <laughs> sometimes it would be like you know, uh, the Rite of Spring, you know, mm -hmm. uh, or you know, Stravinsky, anything <laughs> on that end. And on the other side, it could be the Ramones. It could be. The pretenders, it could be, right. he, he listened to every kind of music, he had right. respect for all kinds of music. Right. We talk about other artists, how we felt about, you know, I mean, he would say, I don't know how we got on the subject of Dolly Parton one day, but he was like, I, I, her voice is amazing to me. He's like, she sings pitch perfect. I, you know, she's oh. one of my absolute favorites. You know, I don't know if he ever, if Matter. they ever met or he said that oh, to no. her, you know, but just That's knowing... I always felt the same way about Dolly. That was so right. strange to me that we right. gravitated towards a lot of the same that's, artists and the same really music. That's really unique and fun and, and great. That's so great. Yeah. And Dolly, I mean, just, Dolly is an amazing woman. I mean, I yeah. don't know if you're familiar with the fires that we had in Gatlinburg, um, Tennessee. No. Early. Just, yeah, it was just a, a few months back, I want to say, a few months back. But um, she was one of the first ones to step up uh -huh. and, and and was helping people financially who had lost everything, lost their homes in this fire. And I'm like, way to go, Dolly. You're stepping uh -huh. it up. You were the, you, you know, that's just, it's mm -hmm. incredible. And, you know, when tragedies happen in L.A. and stuff like that, I, I don't recall ever seeing a Hollywood A-list <laughs> celebrity saying, here, have some of my money every single month to help you out while you're in your family or recovering. Well, I, I don't want to blame the entire city. No, 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 no. <laughs> I just... <laughs> Los Angeles is, you know, soulless or without. No, I, I don't mean it that way. I just, I never <laughs> expected to hear any type of celebrity offer any of, any of their money t every month financially for these people to, to heal. I just, I, it was just, I'm used to seeing them donate their time to charities and benefits sure. and doing all of those things. So that was just really, a, wow. It, it's extraordinary by, by any measure. I, I totally agree. Yeah. Definitely. But I just didn't want to turn this into like an L.A. match <laughs> fest. No, I probably, they don't I probably, know. I'm sorry, L.A. I love you guys. You, you guys helped me out quite a bit. <laughs> me too. Me right? too. Uh -huh. uh, absolutely. Well, there, there's another thing that I wanted to ask you about because I'm not – are you a Bruno Mars fan? You know, reluctantly, yeah. Okay. Me too. Okay. But have you noticed that the new stuff, there's some Prince tones in there? It's and, a lot of early 80s. It is, right? And I'm like, am I crazy here? So I wanted to talk to you about that because that's one thing that I've just been thinking of, of, about a lot lately. I was never 
just and I'm sorry, Bruno, it, it, nothing against you. I'm a Bon Jovi girl for the most part and the rock girl and all that. But when I was listening to his new stuff, I was finding myself really enjoying it. Well, I mean, it, it's <laughs> we enjoy the familiar, you know, yes, and I, yes. I can't I can't fault him for I, I'm happy he's borrowing from a, a time period in which I can relate. Right. You know, by the same token, though, I'm like, oh, man, you know, I, I know. I <laughs> he's know. ripping I... off Shalimar, he's ripping <laughs> off, you know, the time, he's ripping off, you know, but I mean, generally, uh, you know, if, you, if you're going to steal, you know, do it the right way. Exactly. And he's do it the right way. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> my, my grandmother used to say something similar. It was not related to music, but she was always like, if these people are going to steal, they better make it worth their while because the jail time is the same. Right. Why take a hundred bucks when you could take a thousand, you know? And hey. no disrespect, I'm so sorry. And to all my family that's watching, I'm not <laughs> trying to rat my family out, but it's the same kind of deal, right? If you're gonna if you're gonna oh, yeah. do it, like you said, do it right. I mean uh -huh. that that's awesome. And and honestly, I just took it as the world lost a great artist, lost amazing creativity, because that man, there was no other like him in in my opinion. You're and right. so to try to bring some of that element and that feeling back into today's music. Sure. I have to respect that on, on, on that level for what it is. But man, oh man, I'm, I'm so glad I got to talk to you about this because I've been dying to talk to you about that. You have no idea. I've just been dying to see what your opinion was because like I said, you're, you're an amazing musician. You, you kick so much ass on that. You've done so much and you're so experienced that I was like, he'll get it. He'll get where I'm going with this. I, well, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've had a lot of help along the way, though. I mean, you know, a, a lot of doors mm -hmm. open for me that could have opened for somebody else. I, I always tell people, Prince could have had anybody in his band at that time. Right. I was this 19 year old punk, you right. know. Surely there were drummers, you know, closer to the, to his age that had been, you know, shedding harder than me. But right. whatever it was that he heard or saw just made him go, "You," and he that. It could have been anybody. It's, 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 right. It was a lottery of sorts, you know? Right. Well, you were in the right place. You did the right thing, and you created the right feelings because, yeah. you know, I, I mean, we, we all saw it. You know, we had our photographer there, too, that night, and we all, all saw right. it. We, yeah. we all saw just how incredible you were, and we were all just like, wow, even the, the band Talia, that girl bass player, man. Yeah, Holy yeah. crap. She, she stunned, I think, everybody in the audience. And yeah, She was great. Yeah. She was great. She really was. Yeah. Fabulous. So anyways, well, thank you so much. I know you're a busy guy and you, you got stuff to do. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. And when you, are you guys coming to Nashville at all? Do you think? Um, I'm trying to work something out actually with, um, uh, with a guy named Des Dickerson, who used to be in Prince's band, actually. He, Des was the, the guitar mm -hmm. player in Prince's first band. Yep. And he stayed through. Purple Rain. He's in the Purple Rain movie singing a song called Modern Air. And oh, wow. Nashville is trying to put on, I think it's called Music City Celebrates. And it's like they want to celebrate the life of Prince. Oh. And uh, I know they were aiming for a date in April, but I think that might be um, uh, not to their advantage since Paisley Park is putting something on in uh, April as well. Okay. So, and Des has asked me to. It, be involved in, oh, you know, musically directing the, the event and so on and so forth. We're trying to work it out right now. I'm not sure well, if we, it's going to happen, but we're trying. If you get so, to come out, you have to let me know because I want to come and I want to see you. I, I, you know, and, and I got to bring some like Italian, we have to figure something out and you and I, <laughs> we have to like get some amazing food and just have some fun because I enjoy the hell out of you. And I just, I can't wait. I want to watch you perform again. Like, you have no idea how amazing that night was for me and with how kind <laughs> and generous Dave was with his time too. You both, had had it not been for you initially welcoming us the way that you did and, and chatting with us. I mean, we even talked about Boys to Men and the stuff you did with them, you know. Um, I just can't even tell you. that It was such a great night and, and I want to thank you for that because that was a huge, huge, huge night for me and that was one of the most emotional days I had had and I... I didn't know what I was going to get when I went there because emotionally I was at a completely different level and sure. I wasn't, I wasn't sure if that was going to come through on my interview or anything at, at all. And right away you were just warm welcoming and you took all that negative that I had had earlier on in the day and just made it disappear. And then Dave comes in and we do this 
and then you start playing and I'm like, hot damn, this is the best day ever. <laughs> it was definitely amazing. So I just want happy to, to do it. Happy to do it, Melissa. Well, thank you. I I can't even tell you how much it means to me that you took the time. So, you know, if there's anything else you want to tell the fans before we go, now's your now's your chance. Otherwise, we can just say bye now. No, just come on out and see Soul Asylum. We'll get we're going to be touring in summer 2017. Perfect. Come out and say hi. We will do that. <laughs> and everybody at home, you guys need to do that too, because like I said, they're just amazing. Who doesn't love Soul Asylum? And you, Michael Bland. <laughs> Hats off to you. You're you're just you're a kick-ass drummer, and I can't even say it enough. But thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you for taking the time to talk. No, not at that was my pleasure. I cannot even tell you. So thank you, and right. we'll talk to you again soon. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye.